Three, two, one. That are alive, you are coming with me. What's up, everybody? Um, I'm doing this video on my own. Needless to say, it's a little late. I just played uh, Robocop recently, Rogue City, and I feel like the game was almost fantastic. It, it's very important to note that this game was made by an indie studio, Taeon. It was made by the same developers of the people who made Terminator Resistance. So, the jump in quality from both games, from Terminator Resistance to Robocop, it's, it's insane. It looks like a AAA studio, almost. It looks like almost a AAA studio, but the models and the visuals made this game. Because the graphics, while off and on, I feel like they're pretty fantastic. I think um, the environment is very detailed going through uh, the town of Old Detroit and walking around. Um, super, super, um, really good map design. And by map design, I mean, like, um, the appeal. Like, you have the gas station from the first Robocop in there. Um, a lot of cool references in fan service. Um, like, fan service being the fact that Peter Weller is back. And Lewis, Murphy's partner, she's also in this game. Now, we'll get into something I don't really like about Lewis's inclusion um, after this. But uh, another thing that's important for people who would prefer to just get into the gameplay, they're skippable cutscenes. Which is, for me, going on New Game Plus, that's, that definitely helps. If I can come up with a main criticism of this game, it's that the third quarter carries it. There's good fan service. Don't get me wrong, I think the environments are awesome. But once you get to the prison, that's when the game goes from a good 6 to an 8. This game has some of the most satisfying combat against armored enemies I think I've ever seen. I never like armored enemies. I don't like them. In this game, I do. The sound effects, the impact, the auto 9, full auto. Dude, this game is freaking phenomenal. You'll, the gore is insane. You'll shoot a dude, blow his head off with the freaking sparks combined from his helmet. And, dude, bits and pieces go all over the place. And you can blow off so many different things. There's so much gibs. It's insane why more games don't have this gore. It's so satisfying. And um, in this prison mission, we can. Uh, there's a clip that we're gonna put on right now, and this clip shows this prison guard in a confrontation with an inmate. Now the inmate's surrendering, and the uh, guard wants to put him into custody. I want to get up out my goddamn chair, boy. Where is it you think you are, slick? Huh? <laughs> This is my house. Get your and ass. And this clip shows this prison guard in a confrontation with an inmate. Now the inmate's surrendering and the uh, guard wants to put him into custody. What is the situation? That, that, that guy takes bribes from prisoners and wants to blow my head off because I snitched on him. Oh, bullshit. This lowlife garbage is hiding a gun. I just want to disarm him and cuff him. If you let him cuff me, he'll kill me. Just let me go. I know where the other guards are. I'll head there right away. But you can make the choice to either make the guard let him go or assist him in detaining the inmate. And 
if you let that inmate go, which my dad unfortunately did, the inmate's going to walk out and he's going to end up shooting and killing one of the correctional guards. Freaking awesome detail. Um, the game made it to where there's politics and stuff. I don't really care about the politics in the game. I don't mind that. But it's really nice to see that the devs actually took and like actually cared about side missions and making them important. Um, this game, I, now I initially said one of the main reasons I quit the first time was because of the Ed 209 fight. But I played it the second time around with the full auto, uh, auto 9. Dude, I feel like it was super satisfying to kill him too. Bits and chunks of his, uh, the armor blows off and then you can see the engine, the model. Dude, super, super fun to kill. Um, the, he pops up a few more times later in the campaign and it's, uh, not as fun as it was the first time. And, uh, Robo Kane, the guy from the second movie, he comes back and he's the old man reincarnated. Um, that is the best boss fight in the game by far. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, another thing that they added that was freaking awesome was the, uh, the grab ability. Now, in a game like Robocop, a game like Crisis, it's meant to empower the player. And being able to grab a mother effer and chuck him into the stratosphere or chuck him into his other buddies and watch them ragdoll, dude, there's, there's very little in gaming more satisfying than that. And the ragdolls are pretty great, too, especially the physics. So th there's also abilities. Um, they're kind of lacking. Uh, I like the shield mode. You press B, it reduces your damage by like 80%. Um, you can upgrade that. There, you can deflect bullets off of walls. I didn't really use that one that much. Um, the flashbang is nice, but it's kind of underwhelming. Um, time slow, you already kind of get that when you breach through. They could have done more, but it's nice to see the abilities are in the game. We need to seal off this area. If you go further, you won't be able to turn back. So, do you want to proceed? I must finish something first. All right, it can wait a little longer. Now, of course, we've mentioned before that this is from an indie studio. So you have to take the cons with a grain of salt. Like, for instance, voice acting. They don't have the budget to pay for big names in the voice acting scene. Although it is very strange and upsetting to me that they couldn't, with everything that they did, they, they couldn't manage to get any vo good voice actors in there. They actually got Peter Weller back. The original Alex Murphy. And just this time, he seemed off. He did, like, um, there's this little scene where he's, uh, there's all kinds of crap where he just sounds weird. I get it. He's old now. He's not the same guy. But I just feel like he's almost, it doesn't sound like it's the same person. I can appreciate that they tried to bring back elements of the first game, or the first movie. Um, the drama and everything about um, Murphy being still being a human still, and not just a cyborg. I feel like that was already over and done with after the first movie ended. So it was nice to see it, but it's like it kind of felt like Murphy kind of stepped backwards and became more of, you know, that cyborg again, than, you know, like actually evolving like he did from the first time where he was a cyborg and then he gradually increased by the end of the movie into a normal human again. Well, kind of, aside from being a giant robot cyborg. Leave me alone. But this time it's like it feels like they kind of, he kind of, he went back. He took a step backwards. And, uh, that's, um, it's noticeable in the game. And just the cutscenes combined with the bad voice acting. Um, just the jankiness of it being an indie studio. I feel like the game could have gone better without it. It could have been done way better. But I didn't really care for the story. Um, Wendell Altonowski, um, the villain, he, he was trash. Um, he was absolute garbage in comparison to the freaking beast known as Clarence Bodiger. 
in the first one. He was an awesome villain. It would have been nice to see him return, but with poor voice acting, it wouldn't have been worth it. Book him. Shit. Just give me my fucking phone call. Um, it lacks really any memorable music. The first and last missions in the game have the original Robocop theme playing. But I would actually leave the radios playing on that would play the metal music. It wasn't the best, but it was better than what was playing. And talking about the radios, you can actually blow them up if you don't want to hear that trash. The environment is actually destructible. Like, you can see pillars, you use the Auto 9, whatever gun, you shoot those pillars, you shoot walls, you, like, bits and chunks of the walls will come off, just like bits and chunks will come off of people. It's really nice to see that. And, uh, another thing about the story that was lacking is it feels like the, the developers weren't willing to push Robocop in any certain direction. They wanted to keep it as, like, monotone as possible. Like, uh, Wendell... In order to make a compelling villain, you could have at least done something to make him, like, to make him a threat. He runs into Lewis, and then he shoots her in the chest. And she gets, she's fine afterwards. She goes to the hospital, she's perfectly fine. It's like that little bit of Wendell Altonowski shooting her, it's completely gone. I don't even hate this guy, because he didn't even kill my partner. He's just a freaking idiot. And, uh... He, he did, it's like they tried to make him compelling in the sense that he was like, he was the brother of one of the main characters, uh, one of the main villains in the first one, the guy who got thrown into a tub of acid. And uh, he, uh, I would imagine he would hate Robocop, but for some reason he seemed to want to almost help him. I'm, I'm sure it was a, there was an agenda, but... Bottom line, um, I feel like Wendell was a very weak villain, but his death was pretty cool. So, and, you know, he hired the mercenaries, and they were the best part of the game. So, that's also nice. Um, now, this is a little nitpick. Um, according to the, like, with the fan service, Robocop would spin his pistol and then stick it back in his uh, leg holster. Now, that's in the game. But it sucks that there's no designated button for it. So you only really get it like maybe three times throughout the game if you're playing it through the main stories. You'll get through it with the combat encounter. You'll get like Robocop will be talking and then he'll just spin his gun around. And I figured it would be a cool ass addition if they made that a designated button. But again, it's a nitpick. So it's not really a con. Um, what is a con, however, is... I wanted to play the game again so I could do the prison sequence. Because the prison mission is the best one in the game, hands down. There's nothing in the game that is better than the prison sequence. And I can't go back after I've beaten the game and select that mission because there's no mission selector. So the only thing I can do is go to New Game Plus. And that's just kind of a pain in the ass. Um, there's, I feel like the difficulty of, with the game... Um, I'd say that would be a con, but for me, personally, I liked the difficulty where it was at. I think a game like that, like Crisis, it's, it shouldn't be too easy, but at the same time, you're Robocop. You're, it's supposed to be a power fantasy. Empower the player. This is what I mean. Empowering the player. Grabbing a dude. Chucking him. You shouldn't be dying in two shots when you're Robocop. You shouldn't be dying in two shots when you're in a nano suit. I would prefer easy difficulty with a believable backstory than hard difficulty and no backstory. Anyways, final rating on the game. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. If it weren't for the fact that the game is made by an indie studio and had those uh, little uh, shortcomings that come with having a lower budget... I, I would have given it a higher rating. But, of course, I can't just say that it's a 10 out of 10 game because those flaws with the poor budget, with the low budget, definitely come into account in a game that's supposed to be as serious as the story of Robocop. Anyways, I love the game. If you haven't played it yet,
please play it. Support these developers. If you want them to stop making Fortnite clones, how about we start supporting the devs to actually make the games we want to make? We want them to make, okay? All right. I'll let you. And I loved pretty much every second of it. Um, I had originally every played second. it. Every second? <sighs> Sorry, go ahead. You know what, let's restart it. What? Because I feel like I'm beating around the bush. Um, the prison sequence is probably the, uh... I'm not feeling it, dude. <laughs> the prison sequence! <laughs> the prison <laughs> sequence! You see how you just checked out mentally? <sighs> Alright, three, two, one. Oh, uh, alright, let's do this again. Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Doing this video by myself. Needless to say, video's a little late. Are we done? Three, two, one. All right, oh, <laughs> all right. Three, two, one.